Hey everybody, this is Pat Giamarco of Toledo SEO for Growth dot com. Hey, been getting a lot of questions about how businesses, local businesses in the Toledo area, Michigan area, can market themselves better online. Now, there's a lot of information out there which may make it confusing and complicated, and I wanted to put together a quick screen capture presentation on how to dominate local SEO for the balance of 2019, but also into 2020. Um, we know it's a selective consumption economy today. Consumers are going online first and foremost to get answers to their questions and to find relevant solutions to their problems, products and services. Um, so I wanted to put together a quick little checklist here for you. But first, let's kind of go into some top ranking factors as we know them today. Okay, Proximity is basically how far the searcher is from your business location, your physical business location, or the registered business you have on Google Maps, Google My Business, which we will talk about a lot in this presentation, is becoming and is a very important factor in local SEO, local findability. Okay, So proximity, where you are in relation to where the searcher is searching from, number one, reviews. Reviews send a strong signal to Google that you are a real quality business. Not to mention the fact that from a, from a decision-making standpoint, they go far in helping determine what product or service we go with as consumers, right? We've got a choice between somebody who doesn't have any reviews and a business or product or service that has 15, 20, 25 positive reviews. We're probably going to lean towards... Uh, the one that has 15, 20, 25 positive reviews. Okay, citations and consistency. NAP, N-A-P, stands for name of the business, address of the business, and phone number of the business. Okay, all those three elements at least need to be consistent across all digital platforms, whether it be directories, whether it be your website, whether it be social media, you name it. Make sure that the name of the business, your address, your physical address of the business, and the phone number of the business is consistent across all digital platforms. Okay? Domain authority, domain trust, it matters. It matters a lot, um, but not as much as for... A, organic listing or domain authority is a Moz. Moz is a, a business in the SEO space that they they try and guess or give you a number based out of a hundred as to how rankable your website is or your web pages are okay but today your website in the eyes of Google needs to be it needs to show expertise authority and trust it stands for eat E-A-T. How do you get your website to exemplify expertise, authority, and trust? Not only in the eyes of your, your prospects, people who are coming to your website, but also, and probably maybe even more importantly, in the eyes of Google. That is, that is the key today. That is key today. Google My Business category, we're going to talk about Google My Business quite a bit here. Uh, again, very important today. But are you claiming the correct categories? Very, very important. Very, very, very important to claim the correct category on Google My Business. And then, uh, do you have keywords in, in the business title? Um, Although you may see local businesses using false kind of spammy names, it's only a matter of time until Google cleans up local search rankings. Uh, so consider a keyword in your domain name. So if you're, if you're going for a specific keyword or phrase, consider adding that or, or buying a domain name that has that keyword in the domain name. That will, that will actually help you. Okay? So think long term when it, when it comes to ranking factors and keywords in your business title. But these are the top six factors for local search, okay? This is a, a graph or a pie chart published by Moz. Again, Moz, big in the SEO space. And it breaks down the local SEO ranking factors. And this is probably a three or four month old 
chart, I would say. And I'm going to leave this up here for a minute here. Just want you to get a sense of what's important um, locally. So on-page signals. When we say on-page, it's really the stuff that, that we can control as business owners. We can get into the back end of our content management site, our WordPress site, our website, hopefully, and we can actually dictate to Google page titles, meta descriptions, uh, alt tags, alt text for our images. That is the number one ranking factor when we talk about local SEO. It's stuff that we can control as the owners of a website. So it, is NAP consistent? Are there keywords in page titles? What is our domain authority? Have we good, done a good job maybe through blogging and other, other ways? Have we done a good job proving that we're experts, that our website is authoritative, and that we can be trusted from Google standpoint? So that's, that's number one, on-page signals right here. Number two, link signals or off-page things. Are we doing a good job blogging and publishing really high quality, credible content to the point where other websites want to link to our content on our site? That's ranking factor number two. Ranking factor number two. Interestingly, my business signals, and this is just again, are you active, have you claimed your Google My Business listing, and have you optimized your Google My Business listing? That's number three, and it's, it's quickly increasing as far as it's important in local SEO, Google My Business. Have you claimed the right categories? Do you have keywords in the description and in the business title? What is your proximity? Have you, have you put in a physical address? Have you put in your main phone number? Are you active on it, putting events, putting promotions, putting um, you know, updates from your blog posts, dragging that or carrying that forward over to Google My Business. Have you been active in one of the more important assets that Google provides for us? They just don't want you to set it and forget it. They want you to actually be active on that platform. So top three on-page signals, off-page linking signals, and Google My Business singles are the top three local SEO ranking factors. I thought that was very interesting and wanted to pass, up, pass that along. Okay, I want to dive into the 2019, even 2020, local SEO checklist for you all, okay? Number one, make sure your website is mobile friendly. Take your, your domain name, plug it into this URL right here, or just simply Google mobile friendly test very, very important in Google's eyes that your website looks good on mobile devices, whether that be a cell phone, or whether that be a, a tablet. April of 2015 was something called Google um, Mobile Geddon, Google's Mobile Geddon, where they actually significantly started to focus their algorithm on mobile results. They've even taken it further since 2015. But if your website is not mobile friendly, um, it, it's almost getting to a point now where if you don't have a mobile friendly of your website, you're not even going to rank from somebody searching on a desktop. It's, it's become that important for, for uh, Google, mobile friendly websites. Okay, so make sure your website is mobile friendly. Number one out of the gate. Google My Business, I've already mentioned it a couple of times here. Google My Business, you've got to claim it and you've got to optimize Google My Business. They give you um, an opportunity to put in your location, to put in your business name, the physical address, the service areas that you serve, your phone number, the URL to your website, categories, we talked about that. It's got to be your main category. My example is, you know, Barnes & Noble sells coffee, you know, Starbucks coffee, but they're not going to claim the category of coffee shop. They're a bookstore. At their core, they are a bookstore. So don't try and get too watered down by claiming every single category that you can think of. Make sure it's the core product or service that you offer to people that you're claiming. Okay, but they want you to add photos, both from an outside exterior standpoint and from an interior standpoint. They want you to add photos of your staff. 
They want to, you to add your logo. They want you to be active on this platform. So don't just think that once you claim it and build it out once that you're done. What I like to do for my clients is at least weekly, I'll go on to my, their Google My Business platform and share either an, an event or a promotion that they're running. Or one of my favorite things is taking a blog post and sharing it on Google My Business. You will be amazed at, at the level of activity that your platform and your website and your digital presence um, will get to after you do this for um, you know, a few months. Give it a couple few months for, for this to kind of build. SEO, local SEO is all about accrual. It's not a light switch that you turn off and on. It takes a little bit of time to gain some traction. But Google My Business. After you've made sure that your website is mobile friendly, take some time to optimize your Google My Business platform. Very, very, very important. If you have any questions, just uh, let me know. I like Google My Business quite a bit. <laughs> to optimize content for local search, you can see here, this is just a page on Toledo SEO for growth, but I put in Toledo Web Design and Digital Marketing. The name of my business doesn't hurt. That is Toledo SEO for growth. So anybody who's searching for Toledo SEO is probably going to find my website. So go ahead and put in some cities, some zip codes, some communities, some neighborhood names that give local signals to Google. That's only going to help you when we're talking about local SEO. I'm trying to pick out some other examples here. You can see throughout the on-page copy here, not only am I putting the name of my business, but also I try and put in Toledo, Northwest Ohio, Southeast Michigan, again, zip codes and neighborhoods within the on-page copy. Definitely it's going to be in your page title and your meta description, and you also want to make sure that your, the alt text of your images have geo indicators for, for Google, but each and every page of your website, weave in some... Um, some some local indicators in order to optimize that content from a, a local search standpoint. That's number one. So take a look at the content on your website through the local lens. Are you you know do you have an appropriate number of occurrences where you put in city, neighborhood, zip code, things like that? Make sure that that the, the phone number and address is easy to find. Again, going back to that mobile search focus, most people who look up a business on their phone are probably looking for either the address because they're looking to find you, looking to come and have a meeting with you or visit your storefront, or looking to contact you sl slash call you. So make sure that the address and the phone number is very easy to find, especially when somebody is looking online, that gives Google exactly what they're looking for in this mobile Geddon type of world. And it's only going to get even more more important to them, the, the mobile searching. You know, mobile search has taken over desktop search, I think back in 2015. So it's one of the reasons why Google went in this mobile Geddon direction. And again, they're getting very, very, very serious about making sure that the mobile experience for people searching on their phone or their tablets um, is really incredible. So if you don't have a mobile version of your website, then you're, uh, you definitely want to focus on that first and foremost. Um, this, is just, this is just a snapshot. Uh, this is just local maps. So this is the local map. This is what, once you kind of build all these things and Google My Business, it will help you rank here for these hyper, hyper local search results. We don't necessarily need phone books anymore. We've got Google and the other search engines giving us all the local results that we're looking for. So uh, this was just a snapshot screenshot of when I put in um, when I put in Toledo SEO agency, this is kind of what we see here. You see Toledo SEO for growth, got the little pin there. It's also listed down here, and it's also listed number one in organic search. So I wanted to show you all that. 
optimize page choice. This is what I mean by page choice. And this is all controllable by us in the back end of our content management site or system. Right? We dictate to Google what the page title is for each respective page of our website. I, I often say to people, if you go to a web page, right click, view the page source, and between, you'll, you'll see little carrots and you'll see a page title. If the page title of your home page is just simply home, or it's the name of your business, your website is not optimized appropriately. It should be something like this. Now it's the name of my business, but the name of my business also has the strategic keyword or phrase that I'm looking to rank for, Toledo SEO. So I'm okay with that being in this page title. But then you see I have digital marketing agency in Toledo, Ohio. We can actually dictate, and it should be for each and every page, should have a unique page title. But the thing that is highlighted in yellow here is the page title. We've got control over that. It starts with really good keyword research and then taking that research and actually executing it on the on-page stuff that we control, right? So those are page titles. Unique actionable meta description. So meta description, let me go back here really quick, is this right here. So you've got page title, you've got the URL, and then this right here, it's, uh, it's 160 to 300 characters that again, we control. It's marketing copy, it's sales copy. One of the big factors in search engine optimization is if you're found, if Google rewards you and puts you on the first page of their search results, you want people to click. Click-through rates are a really important indicator to Google that they are doing a good job serving up relevant search results. So if you get served up within the first three or at least on the first page, but nobody is clicking on this right here, usually it's a blue link, then Google's going to reevaluate because they think they've done a poor job with serving up results for people and they're going to drop you off of that first page. So how do you get the click? Make sure that this 160 to 300 characters right here, this meta description is all about sales copy. Okay? And we want to use unique actionable meta description. So not only does each and every page of your website need a unique page title, but each and every page of your website needs a unique actionable meta description that also includes the keyword that you're trying to go after. So again, are you searching for search engine optimization services in Toledo, Ohio? What did I do there? It's a question. I want to rank for search engine optimization services and I'm putting a, a local geographic descriptor, Toledo, Ohio. And then it just so happens that the name of my business comes up. Toledo SEO for Growth is your Ohio digital marketing agency specializing in SEO, inbound marketing, web design, and internet marketing. Actionable meta descriptions. Call my telephone number for your free total online presence audit. Take a look again. Go to a website. Go to a web page. Right click view that page source and see what your meta descriptions are. A lot of times, you, pages are missing meta descriptions. That's a horrible mistake. A lot of times, the meta descriptions doesn't really say anything and isn't related back to the keyword or phrase that we are trying to rank that page for. Okay, so make sure you've got unique actionable meta descriptions on each and every page of your website. Okay, structured markup. This is something that's kind of new, but not really new. It's basically new code um, that a bunch of people have come together and created. And in Google's eyes, they're looking for additional information and they're to, in order to rank web pages better. They're always trying to improve. So they actually gave us, the business owners, the onus of this. They're saying, here is this structured markup, this code that we've sort of created with other people and we want you to use to give us additional information about the type of content that's on 
respective pages. So my example is maybe you have a page that's on that's on that's all about lions. But right now, Google just sees that as being about a very generic page on animals. What we can do with structured markup is actually tell Google very specifically that that, no, 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 that page is about animals, yes, but the specific animal that it's about was, did I say lions? I can't remember, lions or tigers. It allows us to get, to give Google much more detailed insight as to the type of content that is on a particular page. Anecdotally, and I've done this for all my clients, anecdotally, when I put structured markup or schema, it's also called schema, if you check out schema.org, it kind of goes over all the uh, all of this new code and categories. But if you put schema or structured markup, as I've done that for my clients, I have seen anecdotally very nice bumps in local SEO. Very nice bumps. I can't, there's no research out there today that, that directly correlates putting schema or structured markup on web pages and, and increases in local SEO. But I can tell you what I've been able to find by doing this for my clients is that schema, structured markup, helps. It helps with local SEO. Okay, so take, take a look at structured markup or schema and try and apply that to, to your website and to the pages. Give Google what they're looking for, which is additional information about the content that's on your website so that they can do a better job serving up relevant search results to searchers. Okay? Manage online reviews. Huge. This is huge. Not only from a, from a Google local SEO standpoint, but also from a decision-making standpoint. Again, you know, I think you know, if you've got your choice between a company that has a two-star rating or a company that has a five-star rating, we're probably going to gravitate towards the company that has a five-star rating. But, but a lot of companies don't have this be a, um, a proactive thing. They say, oh, if we get positive reviews, honest reviews, then that's great. I think we've got to be ahead of the curve and actually manage our online reviews and actually be a little bit more proactive in requesting and uh, accruing and aggregating some of those reviews so that they not only help us with local SEO, but they also help us with conversion um, uh, in, in decision making when prospects actually uh, read our review. So, so if it's a happenstance right now and you don't really have a plan or a policy or a system or a process for getting and managing online reviews, it's one of the things that's on, that's on the checklist for sure is focus a little bit more on obtaining and leveraging positive, honest online reviews. It can do nothing but help you from a local search standpoint. We've talked about this before, NAP consistently, consistency, uh, really important. There's tools out there. If you have any questions, let me know. There's tools out there that can actually help you do this. Um, but just make sure that the name of your business, the address of your business, and the phone number of your business is very consistent across all digital platforms. As sophisticated as the search engines are, they get really confused when we've got a different address or a different phone number for the same business. Okay, so just make sure that you're giving them what they're looking for, and that is consistency across, across platforms. The next one is build local citations. Again, part and parcel to name, address, and phone number, but this is actually building local citations. It's an online mention of your name, your address, your phone number for a local business or even, or even your, your website domain name. Um, you know, they can occur on local businesses, on websites, on apps, on social platforms, and they just help people discover local businesses and actually, in fact, really do impact local search rankings. So you want to actively manage many citations to ensure that the data that is there is accurate, okay? And again, there's tools out there to help, you, to help you do that. So the number of citations a business accrues is an important factor. Um, and um, are they local or are they not local? So I would eliminate any listing that you have. If you've got a P.O. box, I would eliminate P.O. boxes. Only physical addresses are gonna help you with local SEO, okay? So if you've got a, a P.O. box 
think about changing it to your physical address, even if you don't see people in your office, if you go out to people like a, a house cleaning or a senior home care organization, make sure that you're claiming and building out these, these uh, directories and citations for your physical locations, okay? And it sounds silly, but if you, if you abbreviate road to RD or drive to DR, make sure that you're doing it across um, you know, make sure that you're standardizing those abbreviations and do it consistently. Do it consistently. And then, and again, there are tools out there to help you um, identify these, but, but locate, identify inaccurate or duplicate listings and fix them or, or close down duplicate listings. Okay? Again, there are some tools to help you do that if you need help. If you need help, uh, if you want me to kind of run it through my tool, let me know. I'm happy to do that. But, but spend some time on local citations as well. And then hyper-local link building. The big thing five, six, seven years ago were news releases. I used to love news releases. News releases don't really pass along any local SEO juice, but I would still do them if you're holding an event. If you've gained a certification or some level of expertise in your area, um, write up a news release, put it on your website as a blog post, but then also find these hyper-local websites. It could be a local... Uh, the Blade used to have a tool. I don't know if they still have a tool where you could upload news releases. Toledo.com has a great news release tool for you. Go ahead and start to build these hyper-local links back to your website. Events are a good way to do that. Partnerships with other local businesses or local nonprofits is a great way to do that. Um, news releases are a great way to do that. One of the things that I do to, to great degree of success is have guest bloggers on my client's blog. Reach out to another local company that's not a competitor of yours and form partnerships where they actually provide you some content that you put on your blog, given, you know, give them their byline, but it's content that lives on your blog, and ask them to share that out through their social media platforms uh, and link back to it from their website. That's a great inbound link to your site that's hyper-local as well. Those are just a few ideas that you can do relatively easily and quickly to build hyper-local links back to your website. You know, Better Business Bureau, your local chamber of commerce. Build relationships with local media outlets, so your local newspaper. See if, um, you know, may maybe you can give them content that they either run on the printed through the printed publication, but really what we're talking about here is having your, your content run on their online version with a link back to your website. That would be a fantastic inbound link. So just think of some of these opportunities that you have to build hyper-local link building. It kind of checks a lot of different boxes. It's an inbound link, which is great. It's that off-page stuff that we know is a big number two, right? It was the number, it was the second leading factor of local SEO is off-page stuff, inbound links to your website, but it also gives Google this local search signal. You kind of give it a geographic signal to say, you know, this is coming from a specific part of, of the city or the state, you know, the, the part of the city or the state that you want to rank for um, and generate traffic for, okay? So that was it. Hopefully I kept this uh, relatively short. If you have any questions whatsoever, again, my name is Pat Giamarco. That's my website, Toledo SEO for Growth. My email, my LinkedIn. Been doing this for a while now. And I really just wanted to kind of talk a little bit about and give you some really actionable things that you can do to get found locally at the exact moment that your ideal prospect or customer or client is looking for what you have to offer them in a product or service. Okay? So... I'm going to wrap it up. If you have any questions, here's my information, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Thanks. Bye-bye.